not beat around the bush here. You've all seen Avengers Age of Ultron. The way everybody does it, they do the review where they dance around the spoilers and then they do the spoiler review. I'm skipping that and just giving you a spoiler filled review. So suck it. So that being said, Avengers Age of Ultron. <sighs> oh my God, I'm so nervous. I've never talked about an Avengers movie on video before like this. Uh, wow. Okay, Avengers Age of Ultron, maybe not as good as the original Avengers, but I'd say it's better in different ways. I don't think it's actually, I can't just actually say with my mouth that it's completely not as good of a movie as the Avengers is. It's very different, but it's not different. Oh, this is so hard to talk about. So real quick and short before I get into it, I do think Age of Ultron is a really excellent Marvel movie. It is definitely another nice bookend as the Avengers originally was. And it succeeds more so in the fact that it handles even more dozens of characters and it actually gives you a believable comic book world where random characters from side stories just show up. Falcon walks in at one point. War Machine flies into the action. I fucking freaked out. I think that's where Age of Ultron truly succeeds is that it shows that these kind of movies can work in the long run, adding all these characters, making this a believable, convincing world handling all these different characters from all these different types of movies that have different tones and different vibes, they can all come together and it's a lot of fun. And ultimately, I think that's what Age of Ultron also does really good. It shows you the Avengers doing their thing. They're people now, they're working together, they're a really aggressive and awesome force of superhero people, and it's fucking really cool. Where I don't think Age of Ultron succeeds as much is the fact that nothing is really learned at the end of this movie, the villain isn't really compelling, and as a movie, there's not really too much to it in terms of plot, and that's fine, ultimately. These complaints for me are complaints as a movie watcher person, but ultimately as a fan of this Marvel shit, I don't care. And ultimately, that last big final battle scene I really loved. Granted, of course, it revolved around a mechanic that was kind of stupid, the fact that Ultron was lifting up this big crater to slam it back into the world. Pretty dumb, but you know what? It's a comic book movie, and I think that's where Age of Ultron also succeeded, is that more than the first one, this one finally realized it's a comic book movie. And that's really apparent in like, yeah, a lot of the things in the plot don't make sense. A lot of things just don't fucking, like, Ultron just shows up, Ultron just does a stupid thing for no reason, but whatever, it's a comic book movie, and everything around it is perfect, and I think Joss Whedon is actually kind of like the only person to really handle that right, and it kind of sucks that he's not going to be around after this. Because I'm easy to please, I'm not that critical, like I said, I have complaints about Ultron and stuff, but I don't really give a shit, but like I said, that final action scene I thought was just so cool, and so much fun, it had so much going on, yes, they were fighting generic robots, yes, what they were fighting for wasn't really ultra clear, but it was superheroes doing their thing in a great presentation, focused on saving people, it was funny, it was entertaining, it was really cool, but there wasn't anything at stake. That was one thing I kind of grasped with this movie, is that like, I, the fact that I wasn't really feeling Ultron, like I liked him, James Spader did a great, great job voice acting what was given to him, but I never really felt that he was a threat. He seemed like he could be beaten very easily, and nobody was really that concerned. Tony Stark initially was concerned because he created him, and then that kind of dissipated. I wasn't really into that. That being said, there has to be some sort of casualty, so they killed Quicksilver, and I thought that was actually really effective. As soon as he died, I went, no, and then I realized, oh shit, maybe I actually do care about Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, despite them not having a lot of screen time. I guess they were effective characters because I gave a shit that he just got riddled with bullets. Now, speaking of characters that we do give a shit about, I think the move to make Scarlet Witch give all of our favorite characters Characters, these scary memories and stuff. I thought that was absolutely perfect because Captain America's was so poignant. A man with a war that is over. What is he gonna do after the fight is over? And it kind of couples very nicely with Tony Stark, the man who is working to not have to fight ever again. It's very, you know, hmm, Civil War maybe? Other than that, there really wasn't anything setting up Civil War, at least to my knowledge. We got the whole thing with Thor, and we got the thing where he went to the cave, and honestly, that was awful bullshit. And after reading that, Joss Whedon didn't even want to put that really in the movie. Mm, that's upsetting. But ultimately, I did really like what they did with Black Widow and Hulk. While it was unexpected and unconventional and very against the Black Widow Natasha Romanoff that I grew up reading, it was still done in a pretty okay way that I really enjoyed. And ultimately, like, you know, people are complaining about how she was a little bit of a damsel in distress. Ultimately, she is the powerful woman, and she's going after this relationship. She's like, I I fucking want it. Hey Hulk, I want to be your, I want to love you. And he's like, nah, I'm too much of a goofball. And then he flies away in a jet, which was a little awkward. Where are you going, Hulk? You can't fly a plane, you stupid moron. But speaking of Hulk, I really did like the Iron Man versus Hulk Hulkbuster scene. That was really cool and a very well done fight scene that was just exciting and really was that big moment like in the first Avengers where the scale is just huge and you're just so excited for this cool shit to go down. And did I mention Hawkeye? I never really liked Hawkeye. And then in the Avengers, I, I really didn't like him. I'm one of those guys. And then when I started hearing reviews like, oh, Avengers Age of Ultron is gonna make you love Hawkeye. I was like, that's the fucking last thing I want to hear. However, 
Really great job. Bravo. Now, a lot of people are saying he stole the show. I don't think he stole the show by any means, but I do think what his character was given was totally awesome. The fact that it was like a complete surprise that none of us expected that they landed on this farm and it's his and he has a family and that's what he fights for. I thought that was really cool. It's a really great contrast next to all these other heroes that don't really do it. I mean, like, what does Captain America do when he goes home? But with the segue, speaking of Captain America, I was so happy. Thank you, Lord Marvel, Kevin Feige, Joss Whedon. Thank you for giving Captain America all the screen time he needed and deserved and really finally outlining him as the leader. That was awesome. Yes, while well, Captain America didn't really have an arc, Chris Evans really finally, I finally accepted him as my Captain America. He disappears into this role and in this movie, he was just so perfect. He did a lot of cool shit. He went toe to toe with Ultron and kind of fucked him up. And uh, hello, sorry, the, sorry, I'm I'm a Captain America fanboy, but like you know, like I said, with him going toe to toe with Ultron, Ultron really just didn't feel like a threat, especially when he showed up in Africa. That was cool, you know, but it was like he was kind of just a dick bag. He's kind of just a dick bag the whole movie, and he's never really. I don't know, he's just never menacing. But whatever, I don't go off of any notes with this, but I did really like Ulysses Claw as Andy Serkis. I thought that was really cool. And with the whole Wakanda setup with Black Panther, I was freaking out in the theater because I like Black Panther a lot and I like when they do these things. Oh, and Vision, Paul Bettany, really cool. Honestly, someone I was questioning whether he would work in this type of movie, but he did. And, and props to them for making him a real person with makeup on. I thought that was really cool. A little stupid, but you know what, this movie, is supposed to be stupid. Especially, really, the trailers, the dark tone that they set, didn't really do, it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> can, we, can we acknowledge that? This was very much a light, fluffy, another adventure in the Avengers world that was totally fun. And that's where I really like it. I think this sits in like the Marvel Cinematic History. I think Avengers 2 Age of Ultron is going to sit as the second movie. That isn't bad. It's a great action romp. It sets up all these things. Uh, the villain you're gonna forget about, but what it does with the characters, this is the movie that really fleshes out the characters and gives you a better sense of who, what they're fighting for, what they're doing, you know, we get them in their, in their separate movies, of course, but it really comes together, like, how they really work together, and this is kind of the unifying movie, this is, Avengers Age of Ultron, I think, is going to be the glue for Infinity Gauntlet and Civil War and whatever else happens down the pipeline, and for that, it's awesome. I had a great time with Age of Ultron, and I know you guys did too, especially if you're watching this video, I really, I really hope you saw this movie, jeez. Uh, so, let's talk about it in the comments. I want to know a couple things, let's, let's talk about this. How many times have you seen it. I've seen it twice. I plan on maybe seeing it a third time. And I think we need to have a conversation like other than like your favorite parts, I told you mine, tell me yours. Uh, but I think we need to have a discussion about like, did this movie do anything to set up Civil War? And also let me know what you thought of the post credit scene with Thanos showing up and being like, fine, I'll fucking kill him. Because honestly, this was the first time an after credit scene didn't really do anything for me. I didn't even bring it up in the main review because I was like, okay, like whatever. We've seen him already three times. He's been in a Guardians movie. He had a scene. We've been building towards this guy for whatever. I want Captain Marvel to fly in or Spider-Man to fucking swing in. That would have been great, but you know, wishful thinking. But like I said, let's talk about Age of Ultron and the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. And let me know if you like me doing reviews like this, because ultimately this is one of my favorite things to do besides video games is talk about fun movies that I like and I know you guys like. So let me know. But as always, guys, I'm Jake Baldino. You can like me on Facebook. You can yell at me on Twitter. You can watch me on Twitch sometimes and you can subscribe because video games.